With all the media hype around Bitcoin, many people are asking what it is. Basically, Bitcoin is just like any other currency, like the United States dollar, euro, pound, or New Zealand dollar. However, there is one big difference. It's completely decentralized. Wait, wait, wait. What is decentralized? Decentralized just means nothing is controlled or managed in one place. Unlike traditional currencies, transactions, management, or any repository of information is not stored under one system, but by using many different people and computers to maintain the systems all over the world. Think of it this way. Under traditional currencies, all data around it is managed by a central ledger system, which all transactions must go through before any money is exchanged. The difference with Bitcoin, however, is instead of being processed by a central system, the money will go straight to the person or business you're trying to give money to. Okay, what's the pros about having a decentralized system? Our traditional one seems to be doing fine, isn't it? Well, by having a system that can go straight to the other person or business, it will have much less administration costs. So for you, fees are much lower. Other benefits are that you can use the currency anywhere in the world which is a big bonus if you travel a lot or do any online shopping as conversion rates can kill your bank account. Last but not least, your account can't be frozen by any government or anybody else, which might be one of the many reasons it's the go-to currency for on online underground markets, such as the deep web. So, how does Bitcoin work? Well, this part might blow your mind, but currency is imaginary. Now before you click off this video calling me crazy, just hear me out. Currency is imaginary. Now of course if you take a dollar bill out of your wallet, it's tangible. You can touch it, feel it. You know it's a dollar because it has the dollar sign at the top and George Washington's face on it if you're American. But why is that paper in itself worth much less than what's actually printed on it? It's because people have put trust into it and have come together as a society and said that this is what we will use to exchange for goods and services. That's why Bitcoin can be a thing. I mean, it's not real, it's not tangible, you can't feel it, but it's there. You can buy things with it, so if it's not real, how can you buy things with it? Because people have put their faith into it, which is also why it's so volatile, but we'll get into that in another video. So I just wanted to get that out of the way of why Bitcoin works. But how it works is a little more complicated, but will mess with your sense of reality a little less. I mean, I don't want to matrix you too much. How Bitcoin works is around the fact it's a cryptocurrency, which means it's encoded in such a way that means the coin cannot be copied. This is because, if it could be, that would devalue the currency as people would be printing as many bitcoins as possible, which would make it less trustworthy so people wouldn't buy into it, and the value would collapse. As we talked about with the central ledger system before, and how bitcoin doesn't go down the same path, this is where their system of blockchains comes into play. These blockchains act like a ledger which is coded onto the bitcoin itself. The reason why this blockchain ledger system is so important, or any ledger system at all, is to ensure that no single coin can be spent more than once before going to its intended original recipient. Otherwise, people would buy as many things as possible with the same coin, but only the person who sold the original purchase would actually receive any money, which would be a pretty serious problem. I know I've got you excited about what Bitcoin is, so how do you get it? Well, there are actually quite a few ways to possess Bitcoins. The first way is to simply exchange your country's currency, such as the US dollar, euro, etc. for Bitcoins. And as of the 23rd of January 2017, which is when I'm making this video, you can purchase one Bitcoin for $936 and 31 cents US. That's pretty expensive, and I bet you're wishing you bought some back a few years ago when they were only $200 each in 2015 and in 2013, which also shows just how volatile this currency is. The other way to generate bitcoins 
is to mine them. Now, when I say the word mining, you probably think back to when people would load up their horses with equipment, travel thousands of miles on foot, and hit rocks until gold magically fell out. And actually, Bitcoin mining is kind of similar, but instead of waving a pickaxe around your room, hoping to rip a hole in the air where your Wi-Fi is so Bitcoins will fall out, you use special software that uses your computer's hardware to solve extremely complex math problems to essentially earn Bitcoins for the value you provide for the blockchain ledger system. But that's a little complex, so we'll do a video dedicated to explaining Bitcoin mining to help you understand. And the last way? Sell products or services and accept Bitcoin. Hey guys and girls, thanks for watching. I would just like to thank our actors, Fred the main man, Vanessa the businesswoman, Ghosty the ghost, Vlad the vampire, Valerie the seller, and Monty the miner. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Remember, sharing is caring. We've got a ton of plans for this channel, so be sure to stay up to date by subscribing. Thanks.